Hey everyone, welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, 3D animation, and visual effects. I am your host, Sean Frangella, and this week we're going over how to create counters in After Effects, as well as lots of other uses for expression effects and linking expressions around together, using some of these expression controls inside of After Effects to really control expressions and really take expressions to the next level. So here we have this animation where there's a couple of counters bouncing around, one starting at 100, one's at 50, one's at 25, and they're moving and wiggling on one axis and the color's animating, and it's all linked to only these couple sets of keyframes on these controllers and linked together using some expressions. So expressions can be really powerful in After Effects, and it's not too daunting because you can link things together pretty easily and do some pretty cool stuff using nothing more than really sixth grade math. So let's build this as an example, and we'll learn a lot about expression controls and expression effects. And as we're working through this, if you want to get access to project files like this, head on over to patreon.com slash Sean Frangella where we can get bonus benefits like that. And I also had a previous tutorial on my top five expressions and access to this fancy top expressions document where we can copy paste things. So if you want to get a hold of that expressions document, I'll send that to you if you head on over to Facebook and like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Vital, V-I-Y-T-A-L-E, or search under SJ Animate. It's all the same page. All right, enough talking. Let's get started and get into some cool ex expression control workflows in After Effects. So in After Effects, I'm just going to make a new composition, and I'll leave this at 960 by 540, which is just half of 1920 by 1080. It calls expression effects, and I'm just going to make a background solid. So I'll do it layer, new, solid, or command. And this will just be my background color behind everything. So I'll just get a light blue, call this BG. And I'm just gonna quickly create some text up here with my text tool. And I'll just type zero, zero, but it doesn't matter what it is. And you could use whatever font you want. I'm gonna go grab Gotham Bold, because it's a good one for this sort of number thing. And I'll center my paragraph just so it's snapped to the anchor point. That'll be important when it's animating. And I'm just gonna make this white. And then give it a stroke color by clicking over here on the second box, double clicking it, and I'll make like a dark blue. And again, you can make whatever colors you want. And the one thing I want to add with this stroke, which we can turn up on this little meter right here, is we can see eventually it overlaps. We want to change this to all fills over strokes, and it will fix that. And this will be my base for my counter. Now, how we can do this is on a text layer, if we troll down text, there's one little stopwatch next to source text. And if you click it, it doesn't do anything. But the reasoning for this is that you can use expressions to link it around. And if we look over here in our effects under expression controls, if I grab all of these and drop them onto a layer, these are just empty meters that don't do anything either. But the use of all this is that you can use any of these to link expressions from different or multiple layers to, as well as control them uniquely using basic arithmetic as well as more complex math if you want to get that fancy. So I'll just delete all these. And the way I'm going to do this is set those controllers up on an adjustment layer by doing layer, new adjustment layer. I'll call this controls. And this is just a blank layer that I like to put these on because then I can have multiple layers pointed to these. And I don't need to remember which text layer it's on. So to get this started, I'm going to go over here and I'll grab a slider control and drop that on. And this is just a blank meter. It doesn't do anything from 0 to 100. If I wanted to change these input values, I can even right click on the second word slider, go to edit value, and it pops open this little dialog box where I could change it to 200 or whatever I want. So these are just empty shells in After Effects that really allow you to do whatever you want. I can rename it and call it number or counter or whatever I want by clicking enter. And now what I can do on this little stopwatch for text is rather than click it to make a keyframe, if I option click it, I can write expressions. But the first thing I need to do, you'll notice my effect disappeared because it's on another layer, is I want to go to that layer, go up here and click this little lock icon. And that's going to keep that effect controls window on that layer, even if I go to other layers. So it's really useful for this sort of thing. And then I can option click my stopwatch and I'm going to drag this little expression pick whip up to this word slider. And that's going to write my little expression that says the value of this layer now equals whatever this number is. And I can click off or press enter on the numpad. And now if I change this, the text value automatically changes to that. So I can create this counter by simply making this whatever number I want. So something like 100, clicking the slider, press U to go to the keyframes. And I'll go ahead three seconds. And I'll zoom out of my timeline and just 
go ahead three seconds by doing shift page down a bunch of times. And then I'll just type in zero and now it's gonna animate from 100 to zero. But we got this problem, it has a, a giant decimal point when it's in between numbers and we need to fix that. So the way we can fix that is using another expression, which is math.round. So we need to round off this whole thing. So what I can do at the beginning of this expression, type math with a capital M dot round and all lowercase left parentheses. And then I'll close that parentheses at the end of this line. And that's going to round off this entire thing. And then I can again, click off. And now it's going to snap that to no decimal points. And I have my nice counter. And the great thing now is these are keyframes. So this is just going equally through these numbers. But if I wanted to adjust these, and add eases if I right click keyframe assistant easy in and then grab both of them, go to do my graph editor here, make sure I'm on edit speed graph. I can have it really slow down at the end. So if it's a countdown that's really slowing down those last few, I can adjust my motion curves and press zero to RAM preview and it's gonna fly through those first numbers and really slow down at the end and I can keep pulling that. So that's great, that's one counter, but the great thing about these expression controls is we can do a lot with them. So let's keep going and just a couple more minutes, we'll get quite a bit fancier with some of these expression controls and math. So this is taking this whole number from 100, counting down to zero. If I wanted another one going 50 to 100, I could duplicate this whole layer, pull it over here. And now that I have expressions on any layer, or if I click no layers, if I press E twice, it'll show me all my expressions. And if I wanted to make the second one 50 to zero over the same time linked to the same slider that it's already set on the expressions, I can use some basic arithmetic in this. So if I go in here and I want to take this value in the parentheses and half it. So if I, so within this end parentheses, if I do divided by two, that's going to half it. And it's very important that this is within this rounding parentheses. Otherwise, if I do it outside, it's not going to do the rounding within there. So gets a little technical, but basically the important thing to remember is we're having this rounding expression. And then within there, we're linking it to the slider and that writes out the whole linking. And then within there, I could do divided by two. So there's a number of ways to do it and write it. I keep it simple. And then if I wanted another one that's double that, I could just duplicate that layer again, get my expressions up and do times two or times four or any number. And it's going to multiply that and then count down to zero all based on this. So if I want to make an adjustment to all of these, all I'd have to do is move this one keyframe and that's going to change them all. Now those are good for counters and basic math, but these slider controls can be really useful for a number of things and going even further to do stuff like animate on and off the wiggle expression as well as use time. So if we look at this first animation, they're all moving randomly on one axis while the color rotates and then stopping the animation at exactly the same point. And it's all being linked to these same expression controls. If we look here and unlock that on this layer, we have three sliders and we're linking stuff around differently. So let's do that. So the way we can do that is I'll first make these text layers 3D layers. And then if I press P for position, I'm getting position for X, Y, and Z in order. And I can use my crafty wiggle expression, which is my number one expression in my other tutorial, be sure to check that one out, to randomly wiggle a direction. And if I just type that expression in by option clicking and do wiggle, all lowercase, left parentheses, times per second, so two times per second, comma, units, so 200 units, that's going to randomly wiggle on X, Y, and Z. But if I want to do them separately, there's a cool little trick. If I right click position, I can separate dimensions and that gives me separate meters for X, Y, and Z. So I'll do that for all of these real quick. And now if I wanted to just have this one wiggle on X, I could type wiggle times per second, comma units, and I could copy that expression and paste it on this one on Y and command click and paste it on this one in Z. And then I have them all randomly wiggling over time, but it just goes infinitely. So a cool thing we can do is rather than numbers in here, we can use these same slider controls to link these values to a slider. So I'll again, go to my adjustment layer with my control lock that, and I'm just going to drop another one on here and I'll call this one times per second, or you could call it amplitude. If you want to follow the exact expression language, 
I'll duplicate that one with Command D, and I'll call this units to animate. And you can call these whatever you want. It's nice to do something descriptive because then you know what it is. And now what I could do is select this value by just clicking with the mouse cursor, and I'm going to grab my Pickwick again, drag it up to this first slider, and that's going to replace that. So it could be any value there or no value. It's however you want to write it. All you got to remember is that you're pick whipping where the numbers would be. So then for the second value, pick whip to this slider, and that's going to write out this whole expression that says the first wiggle value is equal to this, the second one equal to this, and that can do some cool stuff because it's not going to do anything. But what I can do is change these values, and that's going to allow me to animate the wiggle on and off over time. So if I have 10 times per second at the beginning and 300 units, it's going to be going pretty crazy. And then I can animate those down from these values to zero right at the same time as my other keyframe. Press U to get those keyframes. And I can do the same easing that I have in the other ones by doing ease in, grabbing both of these, pulling those curves. And then that wiggle expression will animate off over time. And all I have to worry about is these couple of keyframes. And now that I have that written, what's cool about expressions is I can just select this, press Command C to copy, and just paste where the other ones are. So you don't even have to retype it out or relink things. You can just copy paste. And since they're each on a different axis, they're going to each be doing different things. And since these are moving, I turn on motion blur for all of these layers. And then when I press zero to RAM preview, now I have them all wiggling and moving and we get our motion blur and it's all animating only on these three keyframes. And let's add a little more control to this and then let's do some cool stuff with the color animating over time as well. These are wiggling randomly, but maybe I don't like how it's going exactly and I want a different random value. And if I move these layers around, you can see that it seems like things are moving and that's because it's pulling this random seed for this wiggle expression based on where it is in the layer stack. So if I want to turn that off, there's another cool expression I like called seed random. And we can type that out at the beginning of the expression before the wiggle expression. And the value here is what layer it's assigned to. So we can change that number to get different values or lock it off altogether. So where there's that wiggle expression, I'm going to click in there, press shift enter to drop down a line and go back up. And now here's our expression. I'm just going to type seed random with a capital R left parentheses, a value right parentheses. And that's going to always lock this random value to if it was the first layer. And if I change that number, then I'll get different randomness. And now if I move this in the layer stack, it's not going to mess up my animation if that's the one that I liked. So if I want to add that to all my wiggle expressions, I can just copy drop down the lines in the next one and paste all those in. And then I get different options for the wiggle and it doesn't get messed up if I add more stuff to my comp. Now let's do that last thing. We can do some additional cool stuff with color effects linked to expression sliders where it's cycling through colors or any sort of color correction effect with a rotation meter. We can do some cool stuff. So let's do that. If we make a new adjustment layer by doing layer new adjustment layer. And I'll call this hue. I'm going to unlock this so I can make some new effects on this layer. And in effects, I'm going to type in hue and get hue saturation. And if I check on this colorize box, it's going to colorize every layer below it. And if I pull up the saturation, it's going to make that more or less saturated. And if I drop down this hue, this has a radial meter. So if I pull to the right and cycle through this, it's going to cycle through different colors in the color range. And I could animate this, but same idea if I wanted to link this to slider controls or even link it to the same one, I'll grab my hue adjustment layer, option click this colorize hue. That's going to give me my expression. And then I'll just grab my controls layer, lock that again jump into that expression that it opened up. And rather than this, I'm going to link this to my number counter. And that's going to do the same idea where it's going to take this rotating hue value from 100 down to zero, which ends up on this red. Now we can control it even more with just adding some additional basic sixth grade math in there. Right now it's going from green to yellow to red, and it's not that many colors. So if we wanted it to go through twice as many colors, we could take this whole expression and multiply it by 
two or four or eight, and it's going to go eight times as fast and cycle through many and then end up on the red. And if we don't like this red where it's ending at zero, we could even take this whole expression, put it in parentheses, and then say add a value. So it's going to over time link to that slider, but always end up say a hundred values higher. So it rotates down only to a hundred. Then I'm going to get a different end result in animation and I can get a different color by just changing this. So there's a blue. I kind of like that. And now I could get completely different animation by just going to these controls, changing the keyframes, changing these values, and it can save a lot of time and allow you to do some really cool stuff that would be a lot more complicated to do with keyframes or entirely not even possible without doing frame by frame animations. So some really cool stuff with expression control effects and sliders and linking all sorts of stuff together. I hope you learned a lot from this one. And if you want to get a hold of this expression document, head on over to the Facebook page like that. And if you have questions on any of these or you want to know how to turn off this updater thing, I have no idea. But if you have questions on the tutorials or want to request tutorials, you can hit me up on Twitter at Sean Frangella. And if you like the show, be sure to support it on patreon.com slash Sean Frangella, where you can help keep the show going as well as get cool bonus content like project files, hangouts, and all sorts of cool stuff. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned a lot about expressions and doing some cool stuff using just a little bit of math in After Effects. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.